Hi everyone. This video is serving as an appendix to the full demonstration of One-to-Many. So to see the entire process of executing a task via One-to-Many, please refer to that video linked below. I want to quickly review the overall structure of One-to-Many, so for viewers who have seen the full demonstration, I apologize for the redundancy. The One-to-Many feature consists of two parts which work together to accomplish an action, the first being tasks and the second being plans. I like to think of a task as the what. It's the part of one-to-many that specifies what we're going to be doing, from running commands, scripts, or batch files, to executing MSI or EXE installs, to changing registry settings. These types of tasks are what we will be discussing today. Plans are the who and the when, and give advanced deployment and scheduling options around our tasks. Plans are covered in detail in the full demonstration video. To get started with tasks, we're going to navigate to the tasks section under one to many on our left hand menu. By clicking on create task at the top of the page, the six task types are presented to us with execute a remote command being selected as the default. To configure the task, we'll navigate down to the choose options box. All tasks will have an editable name, and as always, I recommend being as specific as possible so this can be used in the future. Additionally, you will always have the option of leaving notes for other users who may be using the one-to-many feature. We enter the command we wish to use in the command to execute box, just as we would in the command prompt. It's important to note at this step that all tasks, regardless of type, must be silent requiring no user interaction. About 90% of tasks that fail to run are directly related to non-silent scripts. So you'll want to be sure that the tasks run silently on your local machine before attempting to deploy or use one-to-many. If an end user prompts appear, apart from the user access control screen, you'll want to reconfigure the script with either a pre-configured detail or a silent execution parameter built in. Let's say I wanted to check to make sure a group of machines can connect to a server by performing a ping test. Here, I can enter my ping command along with the location of the server and retrieve my stats with a successful execution. The second listed task is my personal favorite and it allows for the deployment of batch or command files as well as executables. Once again, we must script the file to run silently with no user interaction, but with a batch file I have much greater freedom as to what can be scripted. Additionally, I can add both Windows and LogMeIn-specific environment variables to my command for added customization. For a list of these variables, click here. The batch file tasks allows for optional parameters to be added to the file itself, commonly used with executable files, and I can see the full command transcript directly underneath when the file parameters are loaded. Finally, I'm given the option to choose my logging location, whether that be a standard output and error message, or the file path of a different location. I'd like to take a moment to call attention to the bottom of the page, where you will find a link to our script repository. The script repository is a facet of our community site where users can register and post scripts they've configured. LogMeIn does not provide any scripts up front, so we hope that more individuals will post their scripts into this repository. Moving along to our third task, distribute files is the simplest of the one-to-many tasks, but a very powerful provisioning tool. As the name implies, this task gives you the ability to distribute a file or files of any type to destination folders on selected host machines. Once again, Windows or LogMeIn environment variables can be applied for a seamless deployment. Configure a plan that can be used to provision computers with all necessary files or installer packages. One of the major advantages of the Distribute Files section is the ability to set down a specific file pathway or create the pathway if it doesn't exist, as well as the option to overwrite files if they exist already. I find this option to be a great alternative when network drives are not available. Let's say I have a custom MSI command in a batch file that I will use to install a program on a group of machines. Using distribute files, 
I can specify a single file pathway and distribute my MSI, and I only have to configure one batch file, as the pathway to the MSI is the same on all machines. Speaking of MSIs, the fourth task type is directly related to the deployment, installation, updating, or uninstallation of MSI files accordingly. Select Install or Update Software to upload the MSI file directly. Once again, optional parameters can be added, but note that execution of the MSI must still be silent. Therefore, I find this section is perfect for a basic MSI install, program update, or uninstall. You'll see the entire MSI execute command populated prior to deployment, so feel free to add parameters as necessary. Should you require a more customized installation, refer to the previous two tasks, distribute files, and run a batch. Update registry settings is a very simple task, but one of the most used across the central universe. If you have an exported .reg file that you'd like applied to a group of computers, it's as simple as browsing for the file and clicking Save and Continue. This brings us to the final task type, at the time of this video the only task type that has a PC and Mac option. A custom one-to-many task combines the ability to add a file to a virtual directory and execute a command related to that file. The beauty of the custom task is the virtual directory it creates, preventing the need for scripting file pathways. Similar to our batch file task, we offer a selectable log location, selectable exit code, and use of both Windows and LogMeIn environment variables, as this is the least structured of the one-to-many tasks. The Mac custom task offers the same capabilities with the exception of setting a custom log file. Here, your terminal commands would apply to a file of your choosing in a virtual directory during execution. And these are all the task types available within One2Many. As with all facets of Central, I highly recommend testing these capabilities in a small environment before an NMAS application. Remember, all of these tasks must run silently, so in addition to testing through LogMeIn, you'll want to test scripts or commands locally with administrative credentials to ensure desired results. Thanks again for listening, and for more information, training, or demonstrations on other features of Central, please subscribe to this channel. Happy scripting!